Hi, thank you very much for the questions that everybody has asked over the last weeks. I really appreciate them. And it's also enabled me to figure out what I would like to say in the upcoming episodes. So a lot of the questions that you have asked are going to be addressed in detail in the upcoming episodes. However, here's a few answers, quick ones, to very specific questions. Lisa Michelli asked, what lens do I use to make the models look taller? That's a, an interesting question. Uh, when I'm using what I would consider a normal digital body, if I go as wide as a 35 millimeter lens, it will make things look longer and taller by extension. Uh, the problem that you have with a 35 millimeter lens is as you move closer to your subject, you could distort their face and features. So there's a balance that you have to find. I find that 35 is very good for full length. However, you're gonna catch a lot of background. Um, a lens that I use a lot is actually an 85. An 85 is a longer lens. This is, in fact, my favorite 85. The 85 actually is rather a long lens, so it's it getting up on your subject, but I find the characteristics of this lens are really beautiful. When I pull back on a subject and get down, I tend to get the length that I think you're talking about. The other uh, thing I would do is a, a great zoom goes a long way. So if you have something like a 20, uh, 2470 lens that can zoom, the wider you go, the longer your subject will get. The tighter you go, the more zoomed you go, you will in effect compress. However, it's all about your perspective. So I hope these examples that I'm showing give you some idea. It is a question of experimenting, but the number one rule, get a little lower and get a little closer and get a little wider, you're gonna make things look longer. Another great question, Molly from Indonesia asked, is it possible to shoot good catalog photographs using a personal device or a small point and shoot? The answer in this world is absolutely yes. The cameras, the, your personal device has evolved so much that the photographs that you're, you're attaining from these cameras are, is extraordinary. These shots were all taken using my phone. So don't let the fact that you don't have a very expensive camera hold you back. There are things that a very expensive camera can do later. Um, however, if you're talking about getting a good, as you referred to it, catalog photograph, you're definitely able to get it using your personal device and certainly with a good point and shoot. The power in a small point and shoot these days is extraordinary. Um, some tips that I would give you though, the, the thing that really matters is lighting. So when you're using a personal device, if you don't give it the same energy, if you don't give the lighting the same love that you would give to uh, a bigger, more expensive camera, don't expect a better result. So I'd say it comes down to lighting, composition, and then you can go a long way with your personal device. The other thing to really use on your personal device is experiment with depth control. That's a feature, you'll have to look it up for the particular device you're using. And what you wanna look for is what they call low depth. That will give you a great feel where product comes into focus and things in the background become blurry. That's a really good effect for catalog. And then of course, don't forget the age that we live in. Most people are no longer publishing paper catalogs. They're publishing the images online, digitally. So the images look great digitally in your personal device. So yeah, you can do a lot with your personal device. Hi, Lauren Deplan. I got your question around shooting at night at Niagara Falls and the experience you had trying to get great images in the darker hours by propping your phone against a rock and you were wondering why the images still had motion or blur as we call it in the images. Um, you also asked about getting better shots indoors in darker conditions when there's less light. Those are two very related questions. Um, I've decided to do an entire episode on that. That will be upcoming. I'll keep you posted when that comes. The short answer of it is though, you wandered into a very complex and fascinating area. I love what we call low light photography. The first thing you'll need to get is you may need to make an investment even if you're using your personal, um, personal device or a more professional camera is that you will need to get a tripod to stabilize that camera. The second thing is we have to have a detailed conversation around the relationship of what is called the ISO of the camera and the speed and the capability of the camera. But essentially what happens in the uh, situation of Niagara Falls is your water is moving and you are freezing everything else. However, for you to freeze that water, you need to enable that camera to operate at very high speed. So thanks again for so many terrific questions. I've got questions ranging from working with your models better to pose them all the way through to what kind of equipment to take on a trip if you're going to a beach. And I intend to address all those in upcoming episodes. 
Please keep the questions coming, use the comments on YouTube, and I'm looking forward to being helpful. If I can't answer the question, I'll be reaching out to people who can.